Oh, somebody dispelled that with Amber. Okay. How are you? Good. Beautiful day today. Yeah. No snow plowing today. No. So we were working at Mill River and it's on the dark side of the park and it's all ice, like sheer, sheer mm. ice. It's unbelievable. Yeah. What were you doing there? Taking out a really decayed large white pine and a dead sugar maple tree. Mm. Uh, seven attendees, so I'm going to let them in. If everyone can mute who's not uh, speaking, that'd be great. Somebody has some stuff in the back. Oh, there's Kathy. All right. Oh, and someone else. We have a lot of guests today. Hey, Gordon, can you be the secretary today? Since uh, Becky's not here. We'll get started in just a second. All right, welcome everybody. Um, I don't see um, chat in this. So I won't worry about that now, but uh, I wanna get everyone's hours. But since we have a lot of guests, I think we're gonna jump right in with our guests. Um, let's all introduce ourselves real quickly. I'm Henry Lappin, I'm the chair of the committee. And after you say your name, pass it to somebody else. I'll pass it to Bennett. Hey, this is Bennett Hazlip, also a member of the tree committee for a little over the year. Hello to all visitors. Pass it to. Oh, yep. Alan, your go. Alan Snow, tree warden. Um, pass it on to uh, um, I'm drawing like a complete blank. <laughs> pass it on to Shoshana. Shoshana, thank you. That sounds good. Hi, Shoshana King here, uh, also called Shona sometimes. Um, I've been hanging out with these guys since 2017, I think, but, but I got sworn in, I think, in 2018 um, and been having fun planting trees and whatnot. And uh, looking forward to spring. I'll pass it to Ellen, one of our new members. Can hear you, Ellen. Good 
All right, you can try to figure that out. Let's pass it on to can Julia. Can you type it into the chat, maybe? I don't see chat on mine. Maybe um, I get rid of participants. Are there three little dots? Sometimes chat is in there. Can you hear me now? It's yes. Like yes. My earbud. Sorry about that. Um, oh. Yes. I was just going to say that this is only my second meeting. I'm new to the okay. committee, but happy to be here. I'll pass it to Julian. Hi. Um, yeah, my name is Julian Hines. I use he, him pronouns. I am a new member of the committee. Um, and I will pass it to my friend Marisol, who I invited to our meeting today. No, you're not sounding either. Okay, figure that out while we move on. Let's uh, pass it to Richard Parcelletti. Hello, everyone. I'm Rich Parcelletti. I'm the Northampton City of Northampton Tree Warden and also Chair of the City's Urban Forestry Commission. Thank you for inviting me to the meeting. Thank you for coming. Yeah. How about Ann Tweedy? Hi, everybody. Ann Tweedy, Leverett resident, tree lover of any town. I'm here representing the Amherst Historical Society and our really old sycamore tree. It is a beaut. Sarah, I'll just call everyone. I'm Sarah Lawler. I'm the secretary of the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee. Um, Gordon. Gina. I'm Gordon. Oh, 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 sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I say I'm Gordon Green. I've been a member of the tree committee for a couple of years now. Uh, Gina. Thanks. Hi, I'm Gina Etheridge. I am an enthusiastic volunteer, not a member, not an official member of the committee. Thanks. Um, Charles. Yeah, I'm a guest tonight and I just figured out how to get the audio to work. So here I am, I'm a guest and I've come to a couple of plantings and I'm happy to be here. Thank you for coming. Yep. <laughs> how about Kathy? Hi, I'm Kathy Shane, and I am also happy to be here. I'm a guest. I've planted trees a few times with people. I'm also a town councilor here in Amherst and represent the north part of Amherst District 1, including several people who are on the screen. Thank yeah. you for your service. Yep, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, Rana. Hi, I'm Rana Erickson, and um, I'm just a tree enthusiast. Um, That's all you have to be. <laughs> yeah. And I want to thank uh, Alan Snow and his crew for cleaning up my badly behaved pine tree. All right, and Mara, Paul, and Jenny, you can introduce yourselves together. In unison. Uh, in unison. Uh, we are we are volunteers. This is our second meeting, and we did a site visit in between. And uh, looking forward to getting more of this. That's Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Mara. I'm an artist and graphic designer, and I I'm a friend of trees. And I'm Jenna. Hi. Hey, and just for you. the Welcome. record, uh, for the record, do you share a last name or? No, we, this is no, a, we just no. share a house. No, this is a, this is Mara Loft, L O F T. Okay. L I N D, and Jenna Copen, C O P E N. Great, thank you. Hmm. Okay. Are you all set? Um, just one comment to Ellen before we go. Um, you joined with the um, the town link, but you should join with the official link next time that you get from Amber. So. Oh, it literally came in just as the meeting started, so. Oh, okay, that's, that's fine either way, but it just- Okay, uh, thank you. Let me see if anybody else wants to join. No, it looks like everybody's here. All right, um, we're gonna start with the guests as we usually do. And uh, one of the things about our meetings is they're somewhat informal and please feel free to either raise your hand or just speak up if you wanna comment or have a question at any time, don't be shy. Um, so I'm not sure who to start with, but uh, Rich and Kathy, are you in any hurry at all? Okay, so let's uh, introduce Ann Tweedy and um, explain what, why, how you got interested in us. 
Sure. Um, so I am representing the Amherst History Museum and we are looking at the structure. It's a very old house and we are trying to figure out ways to um, deal with the age of the house and some of the hazards of the house. And we had uh, one of the fire uh, crew come through and do an evaluation on potential dangers to the structure and the old tree, the sycamore tree, was definitely considered something to keep an eye on in his opinion. So Alan Snow uh, very graciously met me to take a look at the tree and um, encouraged our board to think about potentially applying for a grant through the DCR, I believe. And it's for a heritage tree grant. Um, and I think that that tree does qualify. It was planted anywhere between 1750 and 1790, they're not quite sure. It was one of two trees planted, two sycamore trees, um, the bride and groom tree as it was known. And the bride tree fell, I think during the 38 hurricane or potentially after that. So there's just one tree left and it really is magnificent. And it we is. wanna be sure that we uh, can preserve it and while keeping the house safe. So, I'm here to kind of ask your opinion on, on how we should proceed. Okay, well, uh, I think saving it is crucial and uh, whatever we can do, we can help. Um, I think really applying for that grant is probably a great idea to get a, a tree service in cabling or whatever needs to be done, but uh, that would be the first step. Um, we don't have money. It's not technically a street tree, so it's not under our jurisdiction. Okay. Um, I, um, Henry, can I add a few? Thoughts? Yes, of course. So, on the, um, these are matching grants through the DCR. Um, so, um, volunteer time, you know, private fundraising, things like that go towards a match for the grant. So, um, the history committee could help through, through fundraising uh, events or uh, labor to help, you know, match. Uh, the grant, so there's this you know, a fair amount that Shade Tree Committee can do to help publicize it, raise awareness. Um, the grant actually needs to be filed by the town, um, the application um, in support of it. Um, but, uh, and I think the, the grant round uh, is in the fall, so we have some time to we have some time to plan. I would also just like to say that. Molly Freilicher is the community action forester with Massachusetts DCR um, and her office is right near um, UMass campus and she's super helpful. So if um, you know you wanted to or our committee could reach out to her for any guidance about the grants. I know that's one of the things that the DCR is really trying to get their communities to take more advantage of these opportunities. So um, she could be a potential resource to reach out to as well. No, oh, great. I'll agree. send you. I'll send you her email address. Okay. So with the, um, I mean, I don't know if the committee wants to have a motion or, or discuss, you know, now or at the next meeting at some point, you know, an official um, vote on participating and, and committing to making this happen. Yeah, I think we have a pretty full agenda tonight, so it may be better to wait, but um, I think it's going to be pretty easy for us to endorse it and uh, we could write a letter of support for the application. That would be wonderful. Yeah. And I can bring that back to our board because we just uh, brought on new members and our meeting is next week. So I can kind of share what I've learned uh, tonight and say that uh, this is this looks like a path that the public tree, uh, shade tree committee would like to help us with. And that would be great. Great. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Anybody yeah, else? I love that tree. I th it's like it's got to be one of the oldest sycamores in town. I measured it at 201 inches around circumference, and it it beat all the other sycamores that I've measured so far, except for the one that's like a it's a double. So, but that one's bigger, but it's it's a double. So I think actually that the that that one's actually older. Wow. Yeah, they don't know. It's seven. I have the book here. It's like they, they don't know whether it was 1750 or 1790, but it is old. 
old, old. Mm. And it's beautiful and still living and healthy and we want to keep it. So yeah, thank it's you. It's a gorgeous tree loved by the community. Yeah. And I'm sure Kathy, the uh, town council would be in support of anything we can do to help it. Yes, and uh, you know, the, the council's role in this is uh, if you've got Alan working on how to get the grant and we don't get directly involved, you know, we're not needed for that, but um, yes. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right, Charles. Yes, thank you, Ann. Yep. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome to stay or if you need to go, that's fine. Uh, let's move on to Kathy next. So I'm, Henry, I am mainly here because you invited me um, and you said, would I join one of your meetings? And I love when you start going out to dig and put trees in. I will be an eager volunteer to be doing that. I, I found it great, even in the rain, in the mud um, and people showing me why my trees die because when I plant them, I've been doing it wrong forever. So, so you had a, purpose for inviting me or you just wanted me to sit in on a meeting um it's both um we are working on a couple of things uh working on a significant tree ordinance which would give extra protection to trees in town even on private property that are larger than a certain size that we have not defined yet that's one of the reasons uh, rich is here today from northampton because they have one of those ordinances and we're also hoping to get at some point get a line item in the town budget for new trees. Now that the $600,000 bond issue has been used up, um, we don't have, a, you know, other than fundraising, we don't have a way to support planting new trees. Okay. We do have the tree gift fund, which gets money when people cut down trees, but that doesn't go very far. So. Um, I would be happy to talk to you more about the ordinance, you know, for line items um, other than directly speaking to the town manager to say, put it in somewhere. You know, again, we are, we're in this sort of high level, um, making sure there's enough money. And then down at the town staff level, people are setting priorities, but the ordinance alone will draw people's attention to the fact that you no longer have a line item budget for this. Um, mm you know, people are probably not aware of it. Oh, you know, just um, one of the times, you know, on, on the goodwill this creates in the community when uh, we were on, I think Summer Street, Gordon was there that day and we were planting a tree. These young college kids came out and they said, you're giving us a tree and, you know, how do we take care of it? And our very own, you know, it was right by their sidewalk. They're, they were so delighted that people and they say can we dig can we help so it's it's a what you're doing builds community in a way i think that's pretty important okay. should i speak now a little bit about the line item thing sure because um i emailed paul bachman saying that we needed a line item for forty thousand and what is our best procedure asking him what our best procedure is for making that happen and he never got back to me <laughs> oh, God. Go so ahead. like there's been other things that i've contacted him about that are like light fluffy nonsense things that he's gotten back to me right away with so i was surprised that he didn't get back to me at all about this because it seemed like a little more um like official you know like important so, <laughs> so i don't know, you know if that's his way of of you know being like okay this isn't something i'm even interested in taking on or or if it's something that i need to prod about or take at another angle like go in i, I don't know i can't go in right because of the the role but should well, i if telephone you, i have two suggestions um you know one i know it's probably easier for him to respond to the simple thing you know when you say the light fluffy you know he can tell you go here or thank you very much when you asking him to actually do something commit to it 
He's yeah. got this, uh, particularly under COVID, they described one day around the vaccines, you know, 150 phone calls a day um, that are, <laughs> that, you know, they're ju juggling both putting the whole budget together, but also this, you know, when am I going to get my shot? You ran out of shots. But if you, um, Henry, can, I'm, I'm easy to find. It's my last name, then C at amherstma.gov. If you send me it, I can directly request it and say, this is a re you know, coming through, you know, just bring it to his attention. He usually will at least acknowledge receipt and tell me that there's, there's no way or it's in the pot or you know, where they are because they are putting the budgets together right now, um, department by department. And next week, what we were told, what we've been told, I'm on the finance committee. And so we should get this news next week. But he said last night, yeah, today's Tuesday, last night at the council meeting that uh, revenues are coming in a bit better than they had expected. So the budget doesn't mean we're flush. It may mean the budget is not quite as tight as they thought three months ago. So, you know, partly we were tightening everybody's belt. You've probably seen what's the school, elementary and regional schools are uh, to live within the budget that they were given. They were saying they need to do layoffs. Um, but in any case, if you send it through me, I will bring it to his attention and ask him to get back to you. Um, and he usually does respond when I send him something like this. Okay, and um, Alan, would that go under your department, that budget line? Yeah, so the, um, the budget request kind of starts, you know, from my division into the DPW budget and, and then um, Guilford will, you know, work it into the DPW budget and then request it, you know, up through the uh, budgeting process. So um, it's good. It's good that the town manager knows that we need it. Um, but uh, the process is in the works. It's, you know, we'll see if it makes it. Yeah, that's what I said. You know, it is, it's a round of, we, we don't get, the council doesn't get the budget until May, but it's due on May 1st, you know, um, so this has been around, as Alan will know, I mean, since the fall of people doing requests and trying to figure out how to live within um, the overall cap of, of the town services budget. So I can at least, uh, you know, do my best to draw attention to it. Okay, Henry, could you um, get me um, Kathy's email so that I could um, forward her what I sent already to Paul so she can analyze that and then take the next step from there? Great. Yes, I'll do that. All right, thanks. All right, thanks. And um, let's uh, move on to the significant tree ordinance and talk with Rich Parcelletti. Is he still here? His picture's gone, but there he is. Well, I'm here. Yep. So, uh, Sarah, do you want to lead this part of the meeting? Sure. Um, we were approached uh, in 2019 uh, by two grad students uh, at UMass who were interested in helping us develop a significant tree ordinance. And that was one of the things that really kind of kickstarted this project. Um, we've been looking to the Northampton tree ordinance as a major precedent being so close and our, uh, you know, towns being relatively similar. Um, and we have drafted a significant tree ordinance, uh, but we're working out some major pillars of the significant tree ordinance, namely what size the trees are that would be protected and what the jurisdiction of this ordinance would be. So um, we were just interested in hearing about your experience, what's worked in Northampton, what you think might be translatable to the town of Amherst, knowing, you know, kind of the differences between the towns um, and, you know, like kind of lessons you've learned along the way. Um, you know, maybe things that you wish you'd known in retrospect um, or any advice you could offer on that front. Uh, and we can get more in, into more specifics too. Um, 
We are thinking currently about doing a public poll just to gauge community interest in support of this piece of legislation. So it doesn't seem like we're imposing something. We really would like it to be community supported, um, but we're trying to kind of walk this line of, you know, making it available to the public, but not make creating a, a total free for all. We want it to be, you know, relatively uh, streamlined and, and accessible, but something that could also be feasible and, and easily passed by the, the council when we go to, to bring it into action. So was that a good summary yeah. of where we are? Anyone no. have anything to add or do you have any major questions? Anything I might've left out? No, uh, Alan was kind enough to send me a, um, a draft copy. So I actually got to take a look at it and oh, made great. some notes. Um, oh, that's great. So I, I mean, I have a few questions, I think, before I can answer the question. So I have a couple of questions. So a little bit of background. So first of all, Northampton Significant Tree Ordinance actually was drafted not by um, the tree warden at the time, because there wasn't one. It was, and it was not drafted by our Urban Forestry Commission. It was actually drafted by two city councilors that worked with the city's uh, planning and sustainability department. So the Significant Tree Ordinance was actually was the first piece of legislation um, related to trees that the, at the time the um, tree commission reviewed. And I was not a member of the commission at the time. However, I was the tree warden. But the, um, the, the main body of the ordinance was drafted by two city councilors and actually legislated. So typically, uh, our Northampton's form of government is obviously a little different. Um, we have a mayor and a, a city council. So we have an executive branch um, the, our significant tree ordinance was not sponsored by the executive branch. It was sponsored and passed by uh, multiple counselors. So, so with that said, um, just a couple of questions, and I'm, I'm just I, any, if anyone can shout out and give me an answer. So, um, I, just from my understanding, in Amherst, the uh, the authority of the of the tree committee versus the authority of the tree warden. Can someone explain to me what the difference is between the two and how they're linked? I can do that unless another committee member wants to. Okay, don't all enter once. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I don't mind doing it. Uh, we're a, a um, advisory committee to the tree warden. So we only, our, our purview is street trees, although we're expanding not um, what we have jurisdiction over, but we're expanding our, our efforts to include trees in parks and trees now in, in people's yards, because we feel the urban forestry as a whole is very important. Um, we advise if there's a, someone wants to cut down a street tree, there's a hearing, we do a site visit and a hearing, and we make a decision as the tree committee, and that goes to Alan, and he then makes the decision whether to accepted or to um, to cut down the tree. So up till now, we've had no jurisdiction over non street trees, non trees within the public right of way. Okay, so so presently, the there's no ordinance in Amherst on the books that actually governs private trees on private property. Correct. You're, you're mainly enforcing MGL 87 on public shade trees um, in the right of way. Yes, that's um, Mass General Law 87, which is the, the tree ordinance for the state, you know, the tree, whatever, laws for um, the state. May I ask another question? When um, presently, when a developer or an applicant comes forward to your planning board, and I'm, again, I'm just, I don't know the answer to this, so I need to ask this. Um, is there any um, jurisdiction that the planning board has over the actual site plan review in essence of what type of trees get planted in, in a project um, or uh, how many trees are allowed to take down in a project? Is there any kind of bylaw or town ordinance that exists that governs that presently? I'll let Alan talk to this one unless somebody else has knowledge. Yeah, so, I mean, they do have um, the ability to uh, request sort of species and locations, you know, uh, in the review process. I'm not really sure if they can say how many trees you can cut down on your property or not, um, or if there's like a minimal lot coverage. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I really don't know the answer to that on the planning board end. 
Okay, and the reason I'm asking these questions is because I'm just trying to establish um, the role and authority of, and just so I can understand the ordinance better of what, um, what, you know, what, what the tree warden does versus what the tree committee does versus what the planning board does. And I'm, I'm, you know, speaking from North, my experience in Northampton. So this is why I'm asking these questions because it's very defined. So one of the things that um, I, I read, by the way, I really like this draft. I, 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 I like it a lot. Um, I don't necessarily know if I could actually go to my own uh, uh, city council and ask them to protect trees on private property. Um, I think our city solicitor probably would not look favorably uh, on me or, you know, but this is, this is good. This is a good step in the right direction. Uh, because everywhere you go in Northampton, I'm sure in Amherst and in many other communities in Massachusetts, you just constantly see people cutting trees down um, in the in their backyards for really what seems to be absolutely no reason. And I really, I don't know if it's fear. Um, they just they, they don't like the way it looks any longer. Um, they don't they don't want the shade. They're putting up solar panels. Um, so there's a lot of competition in private backyards um, in regards to large mature trees, which really provide the greatest benefit of the existing canopy in, in any community. A lot of people don't like the mess, uh, the leaves, the nuts, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't even come to my mind. I'm just so accustomed to it. It's just like the mess is normal. So, um, and I don't even look at it as a mess because actually it's really adding, uh, you know, viable nutrients to the soil and it's just a cycle. So, um, so I mean, yeah, I don't know if you have specific too. Yeah, I don't know if you have like specific questions for me that you'd like, or do you just want me to ramble on about what I think about the ordinance? Well, I have a few questions. Um, sure. One is, um, you do have a significant tree ordinance that affects people's backyards, don't you? No, we, no. We, well, yes and no. Well, I'll have, I'll, this is a two-part answer. So in Northampton, the significant tree ordinance is only triggered um, it actually, significant tree ordinance protects trees that are above 20 inches in diameter or breast height only on projects that actually go in front of the city's planning board under site plan review and special permit. So trees on in people's backyards that are not that are not regulated or what I would consider by right are not regulated by the city. So anyone in Northampton can cut a tree down that's in their backyard, no matter what size it is. As soon as you apply the zoning framework to a project that reaches the, the criteria that triggers the significant tree ordinance, then that's when this becomes triggered. Okay, okay. Mara, Paul, and Jenna, one of you has a question. Um, I, Jenna, I, I'm, when I was looking over the tree ordinance, I don't know if I have the same one that you're all looking at, it's a sort of page. Um, I saw that part, of course, about backyards, et cetera, and I, I just, was surprised because I didn't think there would be any legal jurisdiction over private trees. I would certainly understand when a, a contractor is coming in and they're going in front of the planning board that that might give some leverage. But in fact, uh, is there any legality behind being able to deal with trees on private property? Sarah? I mean, what do you mean legality? The, I mean, the, the point of the ordinance would give this, the town the authority to say, you can't cut that down unless you fulfill these certain requirements. So the, this would become that authority. In terms of legality, um, I guess what I'm, what I'm asking is, my understanding is that if I were to have a tree on my private property that no one could tell me that I either had to grow a tree. I'm, this is not, I mean, I'd love to have some input to people so that they did not cut down trees, but I can't imagine a scenario, scenario in which it would be legal for the city to create an ordinance of the town that said, no, you can't cut down trees without our permission or that you have to put on trees because we've told you to. So I'm just confused about the whole idea that we could go there. Now, let me just say one thing and then um, pass it back to you guys. Um, there are towns that have significant tree ordinances like ours. So you can, in fact, do that in Massachusetts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I, th I thought like the conservation committee, you know, forbids uh, cutting down trees for endangered species and wetlands and things like that. So I don't know if there's any precedent there. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I would just think that there would have to be, I, I don't know what the order is with it to find out how people feel. I would think there would have to be some kind of education process about what it would mean to people to have the town have some kind of jurisdiction so so that people feel more friendly about it like it would be in in their interest in the in the beneficence of the town and it would look good and uh, you know i i don't i think people tend to be you know sort of private property ish yeah. Those are all very good questions because I've asked our own city solicitor about the validity of uh, some of the ordinances that are in Massachusetts that exist that regulate um, private trees on private property. And um, his analogy to, to me, explaining it to me was basically said, if, if I had a car in my own driveway and I wanted to take, um, I wanted to break the car windshield, no one can tell me that I can't break the car windshield. I own the car, it's in my driveway. It's my right to break the windshield. As soon as I go in next door and break someone else's windshield, of course, that's a different story. <laughs> I know it's a very silly analogy, but it actually kind of puts it really in perspective. It is a very, um, it will be very, I, I think our solicitor found it to be very challenging and very difficult to enforce trying to regulate trees on private property through a local ordinance that was not um, tied into a zoning ordinance. So the key is, is that the zoning, you know, the planning board is the only other legislative body in Northampton other than the city council that can actually legislate, that actually has uh, power in a sense. So the significant tree ordinance in Northampton is triggered and managed uh, by the planning board. And as my role as the tree warden, I'm part of that um, operational management. So I come going to be removed during the project. Um, I read the Arbor's report that the applicant hires um, that um, basically allows, um, you know, determines which trees are actually significant, which trees are not significant, which trees are uh, in director of the assistant director of planning sustainability to go over all the documentation. And, you know, we make recommendations to the applicant. Um, and then that's really how the significant tree ordinance works in Northampton. So as, as the tree warden, um, I don't have any power over any trees on private property. So, um, and it's and in Northampton, it's been a little bit of a struggle because if you have read the Daily Hampshire Gazette in the last few, at least last weekend, there was multiple letters to the editor about the, um, the density of zoning that the city has allowed since about 2015 has changed the way that uh, developers or, or individuals are able to actually buy um, uh, lots that were non that were originally non-conforming. So you can buy a building lot now, you have the proper frontage, you can actually divide the lot into two different lots and put you know up to an 1800 square foot house on the lot and remove the remove the trees on the lot and there's no you know there's no zoning enforcement there's no ordinance that stops anyone from doing that so it's it's been it, it's really come to the forefront that you know having a local ordinance that actually protects trees on municipal property plus uh, private property is is you know is is important to look at but the question is how do you actually physically um, legally enforce it and how do you prevent um your town or any other town from are shielding them from liability from from um, people actually pushing back on the ordinance once it's adopted. So that's the problem yeah. with with the ordinance that I see that in Northampton. Anyways, that was my take from our city solicitor. So this ordinance would is um, I think is would be great, but the question is how do you actually make it enforceable? Without putting the town at you know at a at a level of liability that's I guess not acceptable, that's just one 
comment I have on it. Um, the uh, other, oh, if I sorry. can just interrupt, uh, Kathy, maybe uh, since we're starting to deal with zoning and Amherst, maybe this is something to get into the new zoning, especially as people are opposed to some of the larger buildings in town that um, seem to be the way we get more density in town, but maybe protecting some trees and things like that can, you know, mitigate some of the effects of that. So, you know, I just a response on the question, you know, if, if something like this came up to the council, whatever the council might think about it, the first thing the town would do is the legality question and the town council council would weigh in on the issue that was raised on a does the do we have any jurisdiction over a homeowner and the trees on their land? Um, that would be a pretty quick and our town council always uh, looks at the risk side and says wouldn't do it if there's any risk to the town. You know, I mean that's they weigh in. It, I mean protecting the town. So you know the, it, it would be a different issue the issue of when a developer is coming in, if there are some definition, you know, if we don't have it in now of trees, I don't know what the response would be on that, but we are definitely, when uh, Richard was just saying, um, as zoning is, and Northampton has made the news as allowed denser development of people's lots, um, one of the things that goes are trees, and there is a push to allow those zoning changes here in Amherst. They haven't gone very far yet, but there's a push. Um, so, you know, yes, I think some of the people who would like to slow that down would like a piece that is protecting trees. It's not clear yet whether there is a majority on enough people on the council who want to slow it down. So I'm just trying to, you know, uh, be carefully uh, in my choice of words on this, you know, so, but, 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 but people would, there's a, you know, they're even talking about the North Commons. I know, Alan, you got involved with what are we going to do about the drainage in the North Commons and which of the trees can be saved and which are, oh causing part of the problem with drainage. Um, and people really love the trees on the North Commons, you know, on trying to think of how to save them. So, so I can't give you a good answer right now on a re re receptivity to this, um, but I could certainly see, depending on the piece of land, you know, we don't have that much open land left um, that can be developed. So this is more taking, a place that has a house on it and saying now you can put an apartment building on it or you can put 10 townhouses on it or you can put you can put more on the same piece of land so, so that is a long-winded answer saying I don't really know how receptive it would be and the first thing would be how far can it go on the legal question you know on beyond just the initial developer coming in and developing a piece of land Thank you. Um, I do want to recognize Mara, Paul, and Jenna again, but um, first, um, Sarah, have you done research on which towns have passed it? Not anything particularly robust, like, I don't know, like, it, I'm just thinking, you know, based on the conversation we're having, it'd be nice to have a chart or a map that shows, like, these are all the towns where this is been passed, that they have legislation for private land and these are the towns where they don't um, and I don't have anything like that um, you know I have I've done research on various case studies but they're just you know kind of isolated case studies so I think you know finding something that's more statewide would uh, be appropriate um, so I think you know that'd be a good step and I, I don't have that information okay thanks so uh, yeah Sarah, I, sorry Henry Sarah I do want to share I have an email that has all the links embedded for the different ordinances that municipalities or towns have that are protecting. I can share that with you. If you send me an email, I'm not sure that I have your email address. So if you want to shoot me an email, I can share that with you. Okay, okay. that would be great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Also, and just a, another way of like looking at this, I'm thinking like 
like like you know the image of the the windshield right smashing the windshield in your own driveway as it would seem like like sure that is like tackling it as far as destruction but what about tackling it in the way of preservation because like you're not allowed to dump whatever you want on your land you know you can't just you know say hey i want to put like nuclear waste in my backyard and you know the neighborhood might disapprove of that so maybe there's a way of looking at through a lens of that that would um that would gain us a little more of a heel into getting this sort of protection in place. All right, uh, I guess it's uh, Mara, go ahead. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> it looks like you're muted now, there you yeah. go. I'm wondering if, if there's no way around the legal problem of not being able to do it, if you could do it, something that's more like an incentive, maybe some kind of tax um, break if you kept trees or mm. trees. I don't know if that's like a hot button thing, but an incentive to rather than a punishment. And I also would like to know how Ellen, you work as the tree warden now, when when people cut down trees, you do you automatically go out and talk to them, or could you do something where people at least had to consult before cutting down trees or smashing their windshield? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I um, you know if someone's cutting a tree down on their private property, I have no authority to you know do anything there. I mean, I can talk to them, um, generally don't. You know, unless they approach me, um, uh, I just deal with trees on public, in public ways. Could you have some kind of ordinance where you had to just consult? Not, not that it would be binding in any way, but no, same problem. Same problem. Same problem. Jeez. Yeah, I also wonder. There's a, a lot sort of a liability question that keeps circulating through my head, which is. You have a homeowner who has a large tree next to their house. They're nervous about it. You know, people do get nervous about big trees next to their houses. So they want to cut it down. The ordinance is in place. It says, no, we're not going to cut it down. It's too much of it. And then a big windstorm comes along three weeks later and the tree comes down and smashes into the big person's house. Is there now liability to the town for having denied them the right to cut down the tree, which has then damaged their house? It's just a, it's a very hypothetical but it's, it circulates in my head. Yeah, go ahead, Edward, Gordon. Um, I, oh, go ahead, Gordon. Oh, sorry, it's a slightly different topic. Alan, do you want to finish the? Well, I just want to say, so uh, yes, so that's a big concern. Um, even with public shade trees, we did we just had in that last windstorm, a tree fail that um, I did not cut down because it was perfectly healthy. Um, it ended up totaling somebody's car. Um, in the windstorm, but again, there's nothing physically wrong with the tree. There was just too much wind for it, and it was an evergreen, and it failed, roots and all. Um, so, you know, it's the, um, you know, trying to, to take um, control over private trees adds a, a significant layer of, uh, liability to the town. Um, in the past, I mean, I do, I, I love the idea and the goal of the ordinance. And, you know, in the past meetings, I've recommended that we look at possibly, you know, village centers uh, that have been designated around town or the business improvement district um, that we look at trying to preserve trees, you know, in those areas, working through, um, the planning board, possibly. Um, be a good start. Um, but I, I, I also, um, to piggyback what Alan said, I think there's also an operational cost to this ordinance that has to be vetted as well. So if you were to pass this ordinance as exists as it exists today, you know there would be an operational cost, for example, to Alan's time. 
you know, Alan would actually have to deal with the individual landowner who wants to remove the trees. There's a permitting process. Um, I'm sure it probably would be electronic, but Alan still needs to review the permitting, review the permit, maybe do an inspection of the tree himself to better understand why the resident wants to cut it down. Um, and then, you know, there has to be a decision made. And then, yes, there is definitely a degree of concern. You know, and, and I've, I've gotten um, accidentally involved in private tree matters in Northampton a few times, and it's not has it not been, it didn't go very well. So I don't make any comments about private trees any longer to anyone, unfortunately. So I've learned my lesson, but I think it, it would also put Alan or whoever is uh, Amherst Tree Warden uh, in the future into some kind of a position that might be difficult um, and actually operation difficult to manage to a certain degree. Because you obviously have, if you're going to have these all these significant trees, you're going to you're going to want people to email you or you know actually log their tree into some database, and then those you know they have to be managed to a certain degree. So there's a level of management that goes on with them. Um, and then uh, you know the other thing too is that I think you you have to have a clear line of like delineation operationally. Um, who is really going to be responsible for? Because in a couple of places in the ordinance, you know there's a there is a cross, um, it's a little confusing to me who actually is responsible for, for what, because that's why I asked those questions in the beginning. Um, you know, Northampton's Urban Forestry Commission doesn't get involved in anything that has to do with the actual management of the ordinances. They actually are the ones that help craft them. They recommend them to the mayor or to the city council and then they're off. The operational aspect of the ordinance in Northampton is managed by planning and sustainability and by the tree warden. So that's also just something to think about the, the extra layer of regulation that you may create um, while well intended may create an operational issue on the on the ground um, that costs dollars to, to the town to, to manage. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, um, does anyone, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a, a question. Does anybody know um, <clears throat> anything about the conservation? Because I know like, I only know this because I almost bought a house that was on land that was protected because of an endangered species. And anything beyond a couple of feet from the house, it was seven acres, you weren't allowed to cut anything. You're not even allowed to like apply a tool to any, any plants at all. And I think a lot of that comes under the state conservation regulations, but from talking to the town conservation commission sounded like there were also local uh, rules. And I don't know enough about the, the laws to say anything, but it sounded like there were also local regulations that restricted what you could do to the trees within a distance to uh, wetland. And that it was, the, it was up to the towns to implement the state laws and the towns had sometimes more strict. So I'm just wondering if the Conservation Commission might have an approach to this where if the town decided that they wanted to preserve significant trees, if, if that could go under a town conservation um, you know, umbrella rather than tree warden, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I think we should probably move on. I don't want to take up too much of Rich's time and Kathy, uh, you're welcome to stay, but that's mainly why we wanted you here. Can I um, just have one second to show Richard something? Yeah. Uh, so like maybe was it last year or two years ago? Maybe two years ago. I would, I branched out to um, do some planting with the, the Northampton Tree Committee and we dug up a lot of clay and I was like, I'm going to make some pottery out of this clay. And so here it is. This is pottery that I made out of the clay that I dug up from the, the tree committee's planting over there in Northampton. Yeah, it was on, it was on Earl Street. <laughs> it was, Earl that's Street one of them. I, mean, I made a few things. <laughs> well, I thought you might get a kick out of that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, thank you so much to both of you for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you for inviting us. Yeah, thank you. It was nice. And I'm willing, you know, I'm willing to 
communicate again, or I can respond by email to some of my comments if you're interested on the on the draft. If you like, I can send them to Alan. Okay. Just, just some of my thoughts and comments. Yeah, that that would be great. Um, just we really appreciate everyone's input on this. It's a tricky situation. We're trying to figure out the best way to do some version of this concept. So um, it's really helpful just to have everybody's input and thoughts and, and thank you, Richard in particular. So I, I would be really great to, to get your notes. Yeah, and I think, I think um, this just points to the fact that we need even more education about the importance of trees and the significance of an urban forest in, you know, towns as forests out of towns are being destroyed, you know, and as climate's changing, I think, uh, I think if we're ever going to get somewhere, we have to start looking at these issues and figuring out ways to protect more trees. So, yeah. Agreed. So thank you all. I am going to leave, but um, this has sparked a lot of thoughts. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank yeah, you very thank much. Thank you very much, yeah. Kathy and Richard. Thanks thank a lot. You. All right. So I'm going to uh, share the agenda. We're well, not exactly behind schedule, but we're, uh, we took a lot of time for that, which I really think is great. So I will share my screen with the agenda. Um, and why don't people, let me see uh, agenda right here. Okay, can you all see that? Yep. Okay. Oops. Okay, so um, can we approve the February minutes? They're fine to me. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that has passed without any changes. Um, uh, anybody have anything else to say or should we move to the next part of the agenda, which I've just lost? Where is it? Uh, oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, and um, I didn't get hours from some of you for last month, but if everyone at the end of this meeting or even right now could send me an email with your hours, I'll put it on the list. That'd be great. Um, including uh, non-official members, we count hours so that at the end of the year we can put it in our report to the Tree City USA when we apply for another year of being a tree city. So please do send me the hours, everyone. Uh, let's see. And we'll move on to committee reports. Um, I received a hundred dollar donation check from um, Julian's dad to the gift tree fund. Alan, should I send that check to you or should I send it directly to the town? Um, send it to me and it'll go through um, the DPW up to um, the town. Okay, That's I'll either problem. drop it by you or... Um, yeah. And then Sarah, um, I'll get you the address. Uh, you, you send out the thank you notes or does somebody else do that? Or Shoshana do that? Wait, what? I was just sending you my my hours. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Well, we got a hundred dollar donation. So do you, are you the one that sends out the thank you notes? I have not. Yeah, I do have some thank you notes. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> Nani, Nani gave me some thank you note cards. So let me write down who I'm sending thanks to. I'll send you an email with that info. Oh, okay. All right. Good. And then, so Sarah, you should see a hundred dollars coming into the account at some point. All right. Um, we don't have to go out of order with the reports, but it's go not ahead. here yet. <laughs> I'll keep a lookout for it. No, no. I the check is here, so you right. won't see it for yeah. I'll keep, I'll keep an eye. Okay. Do you want to give your report? Go ahead. Um, the balance is unchanged from last okay. meeting in February, uh, it's still $23,252 and 75 cents. All right, good. And, um, other news from me is I've contacted some people on Glendale road who are excited about our planting in the spring. Um, it's been pretty quiet for the most part, but, uh, we are getting a few emails and questions here and there. And then, uh, Shoshana, you mentioned the Boltwood Plaza development. Uh, yes. The town just got money that didn't include trees. So 
Right. Why don't you ask Alan about that now? Yeah, they got um, a grant to redo the the Boltwood Walk to make it good for um, senior citizens and pedestrians back there to make it safer and more welcoming for like community and whatnot. Um, it talks about like some stairs and um, some seating and stuff like that, but it doesn't talk about trees whatsoever. And um, I was wondering if we wanted to um, make a statement about that. Uh, Alan, is there any effect on trees or? Um, I don't really know much about this. It's I didn't even know it was um, in process until I saw it in the paper. Um, it's not a public way, <clears throat> so I'm not. No, there's no requirement to inform me on that. We do maintain the parking garage area. So I did ask, and from what I understand, a lot of it has to do with um, <clears throat> getting access um, to the lower level of the John Musanti medical facility there. Um, and, uh, you know, improving some sidewalks and things um, around the banks community center is what I've been told, but I don't, I don't really know the scope of work on it. I do know the stairs, I believe they're talking about. Um, and if they're going to put in a ramp, they're probably going to cut down some trees um, to you know, make the ramp work. But uh, there's no reason why they couldn't plant more trees uh, once that's done. Should we get involved now with the idea of planting trees there, or should we just wait and then afterwards we can do a planting? Um, I guess you could put in a request to see if you know they they plan on. I've never I haven't seen a plan. I haven't seen a design. I don't I don't know. You know they may have new trees um, going in, or maybe they're going to try to do it without cutting any trees down. Um, so. Yeah, uh, offering offering to plant trees is always a good thing. I don't know anything about this project either, but I would just say reaching out now, just the more that we can make people aware that we're active in town and caring about trees and getting people thinking about trees early on in the planning process instead of retroactively would be great. So even if nothing comes of it, just I think just reaching out and saying anything about we would like to do a planting or are you keeping any trees or just asking those questions would be a good move. So I, I'm in support of doing some sort of outreach now, even if it's not a formal letter or meeting or anything like that, just something casual would be better than just to make people think about it. Yeah, yeah, just so that it's, you know, they're, you know, it develops the habit of thinking about trees in your plans of civic design. Yeah, exactly. Shoshana, do you want to research who's leading this project and talk to them? Okay. I'll do that. Okay. I could reach out to the facilities director for the town, who's probably be the person to talk to. What's their name? It's, he's new. I'm, I honestly, I don't remember his name. I apologize. Okay. He's relatively new. I haven't really, I think I've met him in passing once. Okay. Gordon, how are you doing on minutes, by the way? Can I find this facilities director's <laughs> name in the town website, you think? I would think so, yes. All right. Gordon, how are you doing with the minutes? Fine. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, Bennett, you had mentioned, uh, you had heard from the Amherst High School Environmental Ac Action Club about tree, what's it, tree plenish? Yes, um, they, um, they reached out to me through another um, uh, venue. It was just kind of a lucky combination of things, but um, they were asking for publicity for this push that they have for um, uh, uh, basically, as I understand it, I'm, go I'm going to understand it because I told myself I would commit to buying a few of these trees. Um, but I think you maybe pay five dollars or something for a tree and then they they deliver it to you and you help you plant it. And it's, it's all about planting trees and they have a goal. Um, I don't 
I, I wrote it up. Once I write it and put it in the newsletter, I kind of forget, forget the details. <laughs> I'll refer back to my writing on this in the newsletter. But, um, but anyway, it was a. It seemed like a great. You know, I was. I was. I'm always happy. You know, as any of us are, uh, are surely happy to have um, students uh, at that age kind of interested in this and uh, trying to push the idea. So it seemed like a natural thing to put in our newsletter. But um, I added them to our newsletter list. Um, you know, uh, Julian Marisol, maybe you know these folks. I don't know. Um, they're in the high school, I guess. I do. Um, and it's five dollars per tree. I think they have a goal of two hundred and thirty trees. See, Julian uh, knows. You were just keeping. You were just being coy. Tell us. <laughs> you know. I yeah. So I've been working with them a little um, in attending their meetings. Their goal is to offset the school's yearly paper consumption. That's right. Oh, that's a nice goal. Right. Which obviously has been none now that it's virtual, but <laughs> probably a lot more paper being consumed at home. <laughs> yeah, so um, can you reach out in, or the next meeting, say that we are interested in helping in any way we can. And um, one of us could even come to one of your meetings, you know, at some point. Henry, do you want Julian to reach out to them or do you want me to reach out to them? uh probably both but julian since he's going to the meetings anyway yeah. i'll reach out to them and anyone here is more than welcome to come and attend one of our meetings so why don't you follow up with that bennett with julian okay great yeah one, one other footnote about that is i looked into the re the organization itself that they're kind of working through this with and i think the organization is 100 percent staffed by high school to college age uh, students so um, just, yeah. yeah yeah it's a cool yeah. Top to bottom, it's a pretty cool thing. Great. All right, that's all I have for the chair's report. Alan, do you want to give your pre warden report? Sure. Um, so we have obviously uh, next week, March 17th, is the tree hearing for the scenic road removal request by Eversource. Um, so um, I think that's on the agenda for tonight, isn't it? Some kind of vote on that. Recommendation. Yes. Um, then um, there's going to be another request for removals on a scenic road up on Flat Hills. A lot has been sold, and there's three trees that are going to be impacted by the driveway on Flat Hills. Um, so that that'll be coming up. No. The um, RBD seedlings have been ordered. I ordered 100 uh, oaks. Um, and I can't remember which, which was, was a red oak or not, um, but they'll be here for Arbor Day, um, the week of Arbor Day, the last week of <clears throat> April. And then, um, that brings up the need to discuss what we want to do for an Arbor Day event in April. Um, because I also need to put the proclamation request together for the town council to, to do the Arbor Day proclamation. Um, so question. do we just want to do a seedling giveaway? Do we want to have some kind of um, table at the farmer's market which might be going by then? Um, no. Are they doing the sustainability festival this year or canceled due to COVID? I, I have not heard about it, but I, I would imagine it's canceled um, just because of the density of people that usually attend that, so. Thank you. Then um, we did have, you know, we had a quite a, not a surprise windstorm, but it did more damage than I thought it was gonna do. We had pretty significant uh, evergreens fail uh, around town, uh, massive concal fir on Pulpit Hill and a large Norway spruce on the, uh, the end of Pine Street by the railroad tracks. Um, and then we had, we had uh, a spruce fail on Station Road, which caused damage to cars. Um, but uh, other than that, it was a lot of small branches. But there was some pretty surprising complete tree failure in what was really only like a 50 mile an hour wind. So that was surprising. 
Yeah, we had no power for eight hours, thanks to the Pulpit Hill Road tree. Um, all right. Uh, good. Sorry, one quick thing, um, Alan, what was the second uh, request for removal? Not the uh, tree hearing, but there was a, where was that? Flat Hills. Flat Hills, thanks. Do you, do you have an address? I don't have an address because there's no property there yet, but um, I can I can share when I get it um, with the committee. We'll need to do they're going to do it, so it's going to happen. Um, so we need to schedule. We'll need to schedule a site visit and everything. Um, I don't know if you want. It's probably too early in the process to try to schedule it now. Um, we'll have to yeah, do it let's later. hold off for tonight at least. Send me the info when you get it. All right, good. Anything else? Or should we move on? I'll check. Move on. Hmm? There's the agenda. All right. Uh, so let's next thing up is the 165 Bay Road discussion. Um, several of us were there and uh, a few of us weren't able to make it. Um, who wants to start off? Um, we can advise Alan that we want the trees to be saved. We can say we want them, we'll let them go. We can say whatever we want. And then we advise Alan and we have to take a vote at that point. But anyone and have I'd anything? Like to just to add um, so that you have some information to work with. So, you know, the total diameter removal of those trees is the equivalent of $11,677. Does Eversource pay us? They would need, you know, they would normally be requested to pay um, under the tree ordinance. So, um, sometimes there's negotiation done um, right. for work and kind uh, in the placement. What do people think? Hi, um, this is Jenna. I, I'm a little confused because we went to the site visit and in the site visit, we had all kinds of questions in order to understand what the other options for the electric company were to use different poles so that they would not have to impact those trees. And Alan, my understanding was you were gonna come back to this meeting because we had time mm -hmm. after talking to, um, was it Eversource? Mm -hmm. And so that we could understand whether there were possibilities of not taking down those trees, because we were all talking about a different other poles that they could access instead. What happened with that? And so I, I haven't got a response yet from the engineering division on what else they can do there. Um, so that may come out if they haven't responded at the actual hearing with the planning board. Am I on? Yeah. When is the actual hearing with the planning board? Has that been scheduled? It has. It's March 17th at 6.35 p.m. Oh. So in order for us to be able to give an intelligent comment about that situation, we really did need some information. Hmm. Uh, is there no way to get timely information so that you don't just show up at a hearing where everything is pretty much already hmm. moving? Well, I would just say, you know, if they're going to move, if they're going to move the um, the switching and all that hardware to another location, then the trees won't need to come down. Um, right. If they can't, if they can't move it, then they're going to want to take the trees down. Um, so, it's your so should we attend this meeting on the seventeenth? Yes. To watch what's going on. It, generally speaking, a representative from the shade tree committee goes to the meetings. Um, and, you know, reads the, reads the um, recommendation or has some discussion about what the committee discussed. Okay, and Julian? as a citizen, you're welcome to attend. Yeah, Julian? Um, this is my first time doing this, so I might be wrong but, on how to do this, but can I move to 
Um, can I make the motion that we recommend that the trees be saved or recommend to Alan to advise Eversource to save the trees? I, my, my problem with this just as sort of a point of order is that of, of course we all looked at it and would like to save the trees, but it was really contingent on whether or not we got in the way of a procedure that needs to happen. And without that information, one, are they willing to make a change? Two, can they make a change? You know, I, I would rather say that given that they can move to another poll, that we would encourage them to do that in order to save the trees. So that, that would change the motion to, we ask Eversource to seek other options and if not possible, then what? Then we accept the trees come down or? Say, personally, I think that you, one wants to appear reasonable um, and if Alan has it right, he and everybody who was there and we were looking, we could see at least two options where they could put the extra equipment they need on two different poles that would not affect the pole in the middle where the trees are. So the question really is, is if they have to do what they have to do, which according to Alan, I got gathered that they did, um, if they can only use that one pole, then the trees would have to come down. But if they can do the option, which looked like we couldn't see why they couldn't, then they could use the pole a little further up or a little further down to do the same work they needed, in which case there would be no reason to remove the trees. Okay, how about this for a motion? We request that Eversource find an alternative means to do this system and to save, uh, save the trees that are at least the trees that are healthiest. There's a like few of them to, that weren't that healthy. I would like to add, though, that I, I think it would be good to make the suggestion so it's a reality to move whatever they need to do to the adjacent poles, either in front of the, be, you don't have to do that. before the trees or after the trees, so that it shows that there is really a real possibility here. It's really up to them, I understand, but at least if what you're saying is more, not just move it, but move it to a pole before or a pole after in order to then do what they need to do, but save the trees. That seems a more reasonable thing for them to consider. I don't know what, what Alan would think about that because he's dealt with them for a while now. I, I think it's all, and I think you're getting to the point of the motion needs to express you know, your concern to save the trees and to request that every source look into other options, um, either pole on opposite side or how, however you want to word that, that they look into other options um, to achieve their goal without removing the trees. Um, if in the end they find no other engineering way to, to meet their needs that they would then pay the replacement cost for the removal of the trees um, if there is no other option. That seems very reasonable to me, but I like yeah. mentioning the option that's obvious because it's very easy for companies to just say, oh, well, we, we, we don't know what to do here, but it's not so easy to say, well, we can't move to a, a, a pole in front or a pole behind. Okay, I don't have the wording that we can agree to, but maybe we can just agree to this in concept and somebody can write that up. I, I felt what, what Alan said, I mean, I, if you could just write up what you said, Alan, about you know using the alternative polls or any other option, I think, and then if they couldn't do that, then we would ask for the money for the town. I think that that's perfect. Can you write that out? Yeah, we can do that. I can work with Henry. Okay. Um, Is everybody in favor of this idea? Yeah. I am. Okay, so it passes unanimously that 
we will ask Eversource, as Alan mentioned, to change it to a different system. And if not, we accept that uh, they'll pay money into the tree fund and we'll let the trees go. And okay, we'll get the wording down. Great. And then please do come. Um, so that's the 17th, that's a week from tomorrow. Right. Okay. 6.45, and that's a Zoom meeting also. So 6.35. 6.35, okay. And who wants to speak in front of the, the planning board about it? Come on, members of the committee. I don't want to always be the one that speaks. Uh, let me think about it. Let me think if I can do some speechifying in front of them. I have a commitment on seven at seven on Wednesdays, so I, I can't on that day. Okay. All right. I need to do this in the future. I just don't feel quite up to speed yet on everything. Okay. Still absorbing it all. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind speaking. I don't mind at all, but I really want everyone on the committee to be involved and um, yeah. be the public face, not just me. So, all right. Well, Shoshana will work on it. If you chicken out, then I'll do it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but I don't want you to chicken out. I encourage you to do it. All right. All right. All right, let's see what else is on the agenda. Uh, significant tree ordinance and the poll. I think we should table the poll for now. Um, Sarah, what do you think? Can we just think about it more and bring it up at a future meeting? Yeah, I mean, I thought the poll questions that you sent looked good. Um, I think it would be good to take some of Richard's advice and maybe wrap our own heads around the ordinance a little bit more or, or maybe make clearer options that we're asking people to weigh in on um, before we go live with the poll. But I thought the poll questions in general were good. So tabling that discussion for, for next month sounds good. Uh, and does somebody want to do research on which towns have tree ordinances and you know, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I, I okay. just sent Rich a um, email because he said he had contacts for the you know statewide tree ordinance email list. I'll send that to you. <laughs> yeah, so I so I sent him an email, you know, okay. for coming and asking for, for those contacts and I can start to compile some of that info. So great. Okay. And I um <clears throat> Say some, excuse me, say something. I just want to, Sarah, you know, I really do appreciate your time and effort and serious, like focused, you know, input you put into this project. <clears throat> it's great. Um, and, you know, don't get frustrated and we can, we can work this um, into something that I think the town will, will benefit from. So. Thank you. Yeah, that's nice to have some Vote of confidence. <laughs> um, I think it's just a it's a long process to figure out you know what's really going to be the best for for the town in longevity. So it's it's worth it to go through the pain of working out all those kinks now, even though it's definitely a lot of work. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. All right. So looking at the agenda, the only thing really that we need to talk about, since I try to wrap it up by seven each time is uh, the second Saturday planting and the, well, particularly the work day, which is um, this a week from Saturday or this Saturday, it's a week from Saturday. Yeah, the 20th. Right. So we're gonna do mulching along uh, Amity Street, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe on the common. Alan, you'll yes. be ready for us? Yep. Okay. And uh, we'll start at nine and hopefully the weather won't be too bad, but just bundle up warm if it's not, bring your mask and we'll, we'll shovel wood chips and do whatever other care we need to do. I made an announcement on the Nextdoor app um, and placed a, a calendar event within that group. And okay. um, I've gotten some 
thumbs up or whatever. So we'll see if that actually works. Good. And maybe get it out on Facebook too. Yes. Okay. I'll do that. I'll do that. Good. Probably tonight. And uh, Bennett, um, what was I going to ask? Oh, was that in the the newsletter that just came out? I no, it wasn't. Maybe we should maybe we should have a special issue that goes out just on that topic. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, you know. I'll do some that. Time. Okay. Good. Thanks. With the logo on the top. <laughs> oh, I got it in there, man. Yeah. No. Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, anything else? The North Common Letter. Did that get sent out? Yes, and I got a very nice response from Darcy. Okay. Um, Darcy Dumont responded um, and is the chair of town services and outreach committee. Um, thanked us for weighing in and invited us to um, weigh in with other recommendations uh, in the future and you know said input from our committee would be helpful on town projects. Um, and I said that we were happy to be helpful and would you know gladly assist in the future, especially concerning trees. Um, so we have a, a point of contact for uh, reaching out about other town projects and have been invited to uh, have a say. Okay. All right. Um, we talked about money from town, the fundraising, let's table, uh, website, any news on the website? Sorry, no, I'm, I'm going to uh, pull the COVID card and just say I, I haven't, I had hoped to have a new draft out by this meeting, but I haven't been able to, so. We're all volunteers, so let's, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, let's just table the rest of the topics. Um, we haven't heard anything from, uh, I forget your name, I can't see it when I'm sharing, so hold on. From Marisol. So is your sound working now? Still can't hear you though. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Uh, sorry everyone about Wi-Fi. Uh, my name is Bonnie Sol. I'm 14 years old. I use she, her pronouns. It's great to be here. Julian invited me. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. Anybody else have other comments? No? All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Jenna and Mara and Paul, thank you for your comments. Um, Rhonda, we didn't hear too much from you today, but that's okay. And we'll see you all on the 20th for the tree work day. And uh, yeah, stay in touch. Thanks, everybody. Great all seeing right. everyone. Bye. Don't forget, we have uh, trivia tomorrow night. Contact Shoshana if you want to join our team.